<laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So we're going to do some warm up games or theater games via Zoom platform today. I think we've got 11 different games. And uh, we've sort of sectioned these off into sitting down in seats and interacting in that way, or some people standing up, or everyone standing up on their feet and moving. So we're going to start with sitting down in our chairs. Yeah, and I think uh, just to say a couple things before we get started, some things I've been thinking about over the past couple of days as we've been preparing for this, like one thing that's come to mind is that sometimes some of these games uh, don't even work for the group you're uh, working with in person too, right? So um, I think a lot of these are going to uh, have to be sort of trial and error for you in the in the room. Some of these we've tried in our classes. Some of them, um, uh, some of them we haven't even tried in our classes, or at least I haven't tried in my classes. So I think a, a lot of them are going to have to be trial and error. And what seems interesting to you as a as a teacher, and what might fit into your class. And I would say. Uh, feel free to adapt any of these games to fit the needs of your, uh, you know, your particular class. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I got. Do you guys want to start? Should we go through each of the games? Should we go through sitting first and then not sitting? Yeah, make our way up to our feet. Awesome. Uh, so the first game we're going to talk about is a very fun game that uh, we, we've played in person um, uh, many times uh, called The Sun Shines On. This game uh, goes by a couple of different names, uh, but the one I think is, is most common is, is The Sun Shines On. How this game is played in person is usually uh, sitting in a circle with your ensemble and having one less chair then you do the uh, number of ensemble members you have. So if you have uh, 10 people, then you're using nine chairs. And nine people are sitting in the chairs around the circle, and one person is starting in the middle. And I, I would say the facilitator is part, you're counting the facilitator as a member of the ensemble in this game. So uh, it, playing in person, usually the facilitator would be the person in the middle of the circle first, right? Um, so how this works in person is uh, uh, the facilitator is going to say uh, the sun shines on and then uh, following that a statement that is true about themselves and a, a tactic would be saying a statement that they think is true about themselves and about other people in the room too, right? And so what happens is if that statement is true about other people in the room, those people, it kind of works like musical chairs where they all get up and they all try to find a new chair as quickly as possible. The facilitator also tries to, or the person in the middle also tries to get a chair as quickly as possible so that there's, again, one person left uh, without a chair in the middle. And then that person uh, repeats the process saying the sun shines on and then a statement that is true about themselves and then uh, this, this goes on and on and on. Yeah. And it's a great icebreaker game because it, uh, uh, it, it gets in person, it gets people up on their feet. It gets people moving around. There's a lot of energy and excitement around that. Uh, but it also gets a chance to get to know people and, and find uh, commonalities between you and your ensemble members and just learn about each other. So how do we adapt this to the, the uh, virtual landscape? Um, so, uh, unfortunately, we can't all move around, but what we can do is uh, we can use our camera uh, to um, uh, uh, sort of uh, replace the uh, replace the part where we're trying to uh, get into the chairs as quickly as possible. Who can um, turn on or off their camera as quickly as possible, right? And the facilitator. Uh, can usually see, or actually everyone can usually see who does that or who turns their camera on first or last because that person will pop up at the bottom, usually at the bottom of the screen. 
So I'm not sure how uh, this recording is being played back where I am on the screen, where Jake is, where Aaron is. But if you have a group of, let's say, 16 or 20 people, and you can see everyone on the screen, and, um, and let's say everyone's camera is on, and someone turns their camera off, and correct me if I'm wrong, Aaron or Jake, but won't that person usually move to the bottom, sort of bottom right, sort of uh, their, their uh, position, if they turn their camera back on, or even if they leave it off, their, their position will kind of move to the bottom right of the screen. And everyone, regardless of uh, the rest of the uh, positions, that person is pretty consistent, whoever you know has turned their camera on or off. Is that right? Yeah, that's the way that the old version of Zoom was. I have a sneaky suspicion that with the new version where people can turn off their camera and their place is held, it might be it might be a little tricky, but let's try it because I've got the new version on my computer so we can um, we, I can voice whether that is working in that way. Perfect. And I would say even if even if that's true, and I think I have the new version as well, and if that's true where that that person stays, I would say for the facilitator, that's a great opportunity to say, um, you know, you're going to have to, you know, put that much more attention on concentrating on focusing to see so that everyone can hold each other accountable to see who is actually last, right? Or who, who did it last, who turned on their camera last, right? So that we can, that the game can keep moving uh, in that way, right? So it, I would say that even more so brings everyone's attention and focus inward towards the, towards the game. Okay, so um, why don't we do this? I'll start. So uh, Jake and Aaron, you turn off your camera and I will start and uh, I, I think I turn off my camera as well. We know I'm starting, so uh, we know who, whose turn it is. I'll turn off my camera, but I'll be the first one to say the sunshine's on. And if this statement, if what I say is true about you, then you turn your camera back on as quickly as possible. And whoever turns their camera on the slowest, whoever's last to come on, will be the next person to go. All right? So, um, the sun shines on anyone who lives in Columbus, Ohio. Oh no, oh no. I think I was the last person to come on. Is that true? No, Jake is still not on. I, I saw him pop on and then pop back off. What happened there, Jake? Uh, I think that's like his missed chair. I think he missed the chair. Okay, I did miss the chair then because I was under the impression you pop on and pop back off. Oh. So you pop on and you stay on. Yes, stay on. yes, yeah, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. Pop on and stay on. Here, let's try it again. Uh, why, why don't Jake, why don't you go ahead and you, you can go this time. So everyone is turning off their camera, but we know Jake is going to go. The sun shines on anyone who had to stay home and away from their family this Christmas. My camera, I, I, you know what's so funny is I can see like my uh, headshot goes away because my camera is, is in the process of turning on, but it doesn't turn on quick enough. So that stinks. But yeah, you know, that might be a slight issue if we have certain students with Wi-Fi problems. But outside of that, yeah, maybe I think that's a good point, Jake. I think that's a good point, and I, I, I also think that even though that might be a uh, a factor in this, I, I, first of all, if you're playing with a group of like sixteen or twenty people, and you know, typically I think some of the responses will be, um, you know, the sun shines on anyone who has a pet or the sun shines on blah, 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 blah. Right. Um, uh, but these were great. Uh, those are both great examples. If you're playing with a group of like 16 or 20 people, it, you'll still get a lot of different people who, uh, you know, turn on and off their camera. You know, uh, it, it'll, it'll go around, um, Everyone will usually get a turn to uh, to do this, or you can you can even say, has anyone not had a turn yet? Or you can, you know, as the facilitator, just say, okay, you know, um, you know, 
Susie has won just about every round. So let's give Susie a turn. Everyone turn off your camera and Susie will, you know, be the next person. But that is basically the sunshine's on. Any questions about that? It's such a great game because you get to really learn about each other so well. And uh, what you were saying, I think the group inside will also moderate it to say that, okay, um, this time Susie's camera just isn't working as well. So let's just adapt the game to make sure we give Susie two seconds of buffer. Right. And I, you know, it's just coming to my mind here is um, what if uh, people can't turn their camera on or what if they um, uh, don't have a camera or something? Um, you know, I feel like that's just going to have to be something that's uh, you go through some troubleshooting and figuring out how you can work with uh, each student and make this as, uh, you know, inclusive as a game as possible. Um, one thing that comes to mind right now is possibly using these reaction buttons as a as an alternative um and we're going to be using those later throughout this session in some other games so there's lots to choose from you know you can do the heart or whatever uh as a as an alternative to turning on your camera so there's there's one idea and there might be many more as well that's a such cool. a game thank you connor yeah of course um n anything else aaron on that no, I think that's great. Perfect. So our next game that we're going to play is called Ask the Oracle. And this comes from an improv in-person game where you have the ensemble either sit in a circle or I've also had it where everyone is like standing and kneeling face the same way and the instructor is pointing at people. But regardless, we're going to teach the um, online version today. So the great and powerful Oracle knows the answer to all questions, all questions that could possibly be asked. So we are the great and powerful Oracle. That's a surprise, it's us. So the Oracle works like this. One person speaks a word at a time and we as the Oracle United will answer any question of life. Because we're not sitting in a circle in person, we have to pick the order ahead of time. So that's really easy. You can just ask students to number off. So there's three of us, so we're gonna number ourselves off. One to three. One. Two. Two. Ah, three. Okay, I'll be three. All right, great. Yeah. Great. I'll be three. Great. Great. So we know that we're gonna go in that order. So you need to know particularly who goes in front of you. So because we're one through three, I'm as one, three is the one that's gonna go in front of me because we're gonna repeat. So we're gonna ask the Oracle a big juicy question. The one that I usually start with when teaching this game is what is the meaning of life? So Oracle, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is to take yourself to Seriously. Full stop. Great, yes, okay, great. So I didn't explain this at the beginning, but the Oracle also decides when it's done answering. So someone, as Jake said, full stop, or can say period or exclamation point and punctuate um, what the answer is. Um, another part of this game is thinking, uh, not, not overthinking what you're going to say. So speak before you know what's gonna come out of your mouth. So does anyone have another question they'd like to ask the great and powerful Oracle? I just have a, I just have something to ask about, about that the last round we played. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just noticed a bit of a lag between um, uh, what I was saying and what you were saying, Aaron, is that because like my mic, like the words, the sound wasn't coming through quickly enough. Um, I didn't notice a big lag, but if you're having like an internet issue, you can turn your camera off for this game. Cause you, oh, good you just need to know who's in front of you. So if you're right. like Wi-Fi was going really slow, you could just turn your uh, video off and then we could still play this game. And Jake would still know that I speak before him. My box would light up and he knows my voice. 
Um, so we could play it that way too, if there's internet lag issues. I think that would help all of that. And you know the beautiful thing about this game? Because everyone wants to say the important buzzword like seriously, but even the small words are just as important. So to say is is just as important because you set up the big punchline word, whatever it is. And so kind of in an acting idea of like, there's no, everybody needs to lift the heavy weight, even if one person's getting the applause and mm -hmm. the reaction, it's still important to have even those smaller words all the way through the connector thoughts. Yeah, and everyone's making sense of this thing. Um, I've, I've played this uh, with social distancing in the Stillman Hall tent. And that was difficult to hear everyone because we were six feet apart in this giant circle. So um, one benefit of this Zoom version is that you can hear everyone really, really clearly. That's such um, a good thing, yeah. Do we have one more question that we can ask it? Us. Uh, uh, <laughs> sure. Um, uh, wow. <laughs> My brain just uh, short circuited there when I was thinking. The Jake, do you have a question? The point of the game is not to overthink. Right. I know. I know. <laughs> I know this. How do you clean your glasses? Great. Two. One. <laughs> no, oh, wait, I think I think Aaron was starting as number one. Oh, that yeah, that was my, I was saying T-O. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so that's a good, that's a good question that comes up. So you hold on to the order that you've done last time, because I think it's easy to just set that up and remember who's in front of you. Um, <laughs> But then signaling when you're beginning is probably be good. Maybe you could have like a gesture, right? And when the oracle is like getting ready, maybe everyone like to clean your glasses. One must always take your own time full stop <laughs> there you go and that is the game oracle uh, <laughs> <any> questions <laughs> so that's fun. fun that totally works i i wish i'd played that in my last class that's great yeah it's a nice game to end a class with because everyone unites everyone speaks it's fast um once you know how it works you can just like really do it in a couple minutes I actually, I think this is a great one to begin class with. Or begin, because, yeah. Especially with the quieter students, just to, especially over Zoom, to say that, hey, would you please go off the deep end right from the start? Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully it'll make the rest of the class easier for them to also connect. Yeah. That was yeah. Awesome. awesome. Thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Great. So the next game uh, is a classic. This is a great game. All right, this uh, is the counting to 10 or counting to 20 or saying the alphabet as a group, right? Uh, normally, when you play this game in person, I love playing this game with uh, in person with any age group. I think this works with kids at camp. I think this works with uh, students in, in college. I think it works with adults. It's a great game. Um, uh, the idea is, you know, playing this game in person, everyone's closing their eyes, you know, usually in a circle or spread throughout the room, however you want to do it. And you give them the objective as an ensemble to count to, uh, let's say, 15. I usually start with a number that's not too high, usually not going over 20, but also a number that uh, the, the group will usually think, oh, that's, that seems pretty... That seems pretty easy, right? Like counting to 15 isn't really a challenge. We can all count to 15 on our own. And then they quickly realize how difficult this actually is once they start working together. 
uh, but usually not going over 20. If I start with 20, I'll usually uh, very quickly bring it down to 15, then sometimes even have to bring it down to 10, maybe even having to bring it down to, to six or five or something like that, um, depending on the group. Um, uh, some people also uh, use the alphabet. Uh, you could do months of the year. You could do whatever you want, you know. Um, but let's, for now, start with counting to, uh, just for, the, for our group here, let's do counting to 15 is what we're going to do. Um, and the idea is that we will, uh, if we were in person, we'd close our eyes. And as a group, there are, as the facilitator, you do not really give them any rules except for that they have to get to the number 15. There's only uh, one person can speak at a time, one number at a time. And if anyone speaks at the same time as somebody else, you have to start back over from one. Okay, or start back from the beginning, whatever you're counting or uh, going, whatever your pattern is. Okay. Um, and, I, and that's usually all I give the group. I, uh, you know, I don't tell them uh, how to do this uh, because there really is no one correct answer. There's just them sort of figuring it out in, in the moment, right? Um, uh, yeah, so how this can work here is we just turn off our cameras. We keep our microphones on, we turn off our cameras, and uh, we'll count to 15. Um, you know, uh, one thing I'll say, uh, since we're all facilitators, we're all teachers here, uh, even though we're about to try playing this, is that, you know, and, and I wouldn't say this to my group uh, as the facilitator right away, but something to just know is that, you know, especially larger groups and maybe even younger groups will get easily frustrated with this game. And something to remind people uh, throughout is to, uh, just, you know, when, when a mistake happens or when two people talk over each other or whatever, take a breath and then just start from the beginning. There's no need to scream and yell and argue and, and blame each other. But part of this ensemble building and teamwork game is to just, uh, is to, um, you know, let those, let those difficult moments uh, roll over, uh, you know, roll over you and allow it to not affect you too much and and just focus on you know focus on the objective which is to work as an ensemble to count to 15 all right so let's try it out starting now one two three four five six Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Wow, good job, everybody. Good job. Okay. So then, you know, obviously... It, it, because you haven't uh, given them too much information on the front end, you know, if, if your group is as amazing as we are and, and, and uh, achieves the objective right off the bat, then you just uh, make it more challenging, right? You could add numbers. You could bring it up to 20, 25, 30, right? Um, now, we didn't do this uh, in this round, um, and maybe it's a little easier with three people. I don't know. Uh, but uh, we didn't um, – no one – said two numbers in a row, right? I, I didn't say one and two. Um, and that's, I think, that's a good rule right, right off the bat, too, that no one can say two numbers in a row. Um, uh, yeah, but that's basically it. And uh, you, usually it, it's not that fluid, but um, we as masters of the fine arts, uh, I think, are, are, are pretty good. So any questions about that game? I just I want students. Go ahead, Jake. I want to mention, I played this game with my students yesterday, and it took us about half an hour to get to the number 15. But the thing is, I'm underlining what you previously already said, which is it's such a great example of trying to show people how to work with tension. I'd be like, all right, we're stressed right now. It's been 25 minutes of trying this. Just put your hands on your belly, inhale, and 
actually manufacturing something like that within a game is so, so beneficial. And did your group make it to 15? Yes, but we had to change the rules. What we ended up saying was one person's only allowed to say one number. And it was a class of 50. And so uh, everybody had to contribute, which was good. But that also meant that like one to nine was really difficult. And then after that, there's only six people left counting. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, I think that's great. Feel free to make changes during the during the exercise to meet the needs of your ensemble. And, you know, if you're spending half an hour, 45 minutes trying to get to 15, I don't think there's uh, there's really a problem with saying, OK, we did we, we really, you know, we really did our best today, uh, you know, to to do this. Why don't we put this away today and come back to it tomorrow and uh, and try it with try it again. Right. Because that's that's like <laughs> half of our lives is especially as new work creators is like trying to solve problems and not coming up with the solution right away and being like, okay, and maybe spending a long time on one problem and saying, okay, let's come back tomorrow and, uh, and try this again, you know, and, and see what happens. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it, it just, it just fits in really in any, uh, any situation. So cool. I, think I interrupted Aaron just a moment ago. Oh, oh just going to say that my students try to um, find a way around the rules a lot of times they'll try to like decide what order they're going to do they like plan it out loud in front of me and I have to like go wait 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 no 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 we don't have like a plan that's that's part of the game um, yeah but I think the utilization of breath is like a really good uh, teaching that tool in this game is really important how to reset and jump back in yeah I think that planning is really interesting, you know, that, that idea. And, and one, um, one thing that just came to mind to try to, uh, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, not have that happen or if not have them try to talk about it, you know, uh, during the game could be, you're only allowed to say numbers in this game, you know, um, because I think that's an interesting, you know, that's an interesting tactic to try to, uh, try to win the game right if, if that's your objective and and planning is part of your tactic but make but presenting that additional obstacle in front of them that they're only allowed to say numbers well if if they if they you know if, if the group i'm working with rolls into some sort of weird pattern where you know it, the person saying number one is always saying number one but they're saying it in such a way that everyone can recognize it and they you know people start to get into patterns that way I don't know. That's kind of interesting too. Um, but if they come, if they come to that decision sort of organically and only are using numbers to do that, that's kind of cool. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. That was awesome. Yeah. That's a really great game. So our next game is big booty, which I think probably many of us have played in person. So I'm not going to try to go into detail on how we do that in person. Um, but it's relatively the same. We uh, just have to know what numbers we are, just like Oracle, instead of being in a circle and having the physical representation of our number order. So since we've already used a number order, um, let's just grab onto that one again. So I'm one. Connor can be two this time. I'll be two, yes. Okay. Um, and then Jake will be three. Okay. so. One will be Big Booty. So uh, the song goes like this. Ah, Big Booty, Big Booty, Big Booty, Big Booty. Big Booty number one, number one number. And then you say someone else's number. So we only have three people playing right now. So there's gonna be, it's gonna jump a lot between us. Um, so you repeat your number and then you pass to another person. They repeat their number and they pass to another person. When someone messes up, they go to the end of the line. So the numbers keep switching. So if Connor messes up, Connor's number two, he would go to number three and Jake would be number two now. So you're constantly moving up if you're not messing up. And if Big Booty messes up, then Big Booty goes to the end of the line. 
the booty always starts the game. So let's try this. And then when issues potentially come up, we'll, we'll iron those out. I, I've never played this game. So what's the oh, really? So So we all sing this little chant at the beginning together. And it goes, Ah, uh, big, big booty. Big booty, big booty, big booty, big booty. Big booty. Big booty number one. So I'm going, I'm calling myself big booty. And then I say number one. And then, oh, we guess we don't have a number one. That's, that was my mistake. So let's do number one and number two. <laughs> okay, great. So Connor's going to be number one. Cool. Jake's going to be number two. And we have a big booty. Okay. Ah, oh, big booty. Ah, uh, big, big booty. booty. Big booty, big booty, big booty. Big booty, big booty, big booty. Big booty number two. Big booty. And you say number two, number? Number two, number one. Number one, number two. Number two, number one. <laughs> number one, big booty. Big booty number one. Number big. one, number two. Number two, number one. Number one, Very number fun. two. Okay, okay, so this is a rhythm game. So this is a little tricky with like lag time, but let's like try to um, snap together. Here, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on now. <laughs> is that not working? I'm, I'm with you. I, I, you, I think you're like every other one. Here, uh, we'll follow Connor. It doesn't sound like you're with us. Oh, oh, wait. Are you snapping on the up or on the down? I was snapping on the down. Down. Okay, great. Ah, uh, big booty. 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 <laughs> oh, is it? It's it's la Is it lagging? Maybe. Okay, so uh, yeah, because like happens, we're troubleshooting, right? So <laughs> maybe just Big Booty sings that song to start off. Mm. Okay, but cool. I think establishing the rhythm is really important, sure. which is so much easier, obviously, in person. But right. let's try to do it on Zoom. So I'm just gonna be the only one to sing the song. Okay, great. Or wait, can I? Sorry, Aaron, I have one idea. Do you, as Big Booty, want to establish the rhythm and you just keep the rhythm? With your hands, that way, if there's if there's visual lagging, yeah, it's not gonna throw anyone off. Would that help? Yeah, maybe. Let's try that. Okay, but when we're passing it, we want to pass it on a rhythm too. So if it's right. number two, big booty, big booty, number one, number two, number right. one, booty number yeah, right. that's like yeah. the rhythm we're going for. Maybe we can slow it down a little bit while we're learning. Okay. Ah, big booty, big booty, big booty, big booty, big booty number two. Big booty number one. Oh no! <laughs> wait, wait, give me a second chance. <laughs> Hold on. So you say your number first, and then the next person's number. But because I messed up, I have to go to the back of the line, which is anyway. Oh, hey. Mandy Fox has entered. Yeah, so you would go to the end of the line. I see. So we're finding this may be like a bit complex on Zoom. Hey, Mandy. Hey. So crowded in here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the email and I was like, ah! I was getting ready to go wash my dog. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry oh, about that. We, we figured that we'll just do this and upload it to YouTube. So any of okay, our perfect. you want to see it, have access to it. Sweet. How is everyone this fine day? Great. Aaron was in the middle of explaining to us this really great game. It's a fourth game that we've had so far, and it's called Big Booty. Have you played it? No. Do go on. I will. So it, I think we're finding it might be like a bit complex for Zoom, actually, because of the numbers and the numbers switching and the rhythm aspect. So I think maybe we should like put this on the back burner. Can, can we try one more time? Because I messed the last round up. Yeah, we can try it one more time, but I think it, I have, okay, we can try it again. Okay. 
I can sit this one out if you don't want to go through explaining it all and I'll watch the video later. Well, give it, yeah, tr watch, see, let's give it a try. We haven't, we've definitely not nailed it yet, so. <laughs> well, I think we will, I think we will, I, I have faith. Okay, all right. Ah, big booty, big booty, big booty, big booty, big booty number one. Number one, number two. Number two, number one. Number one, big booty. Booty number two. Number, number one. Okay. <laughs> there was more, there was actually more, more lag that time than there were, than there was in previous Before. rounds of that. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. I think this is I think this is tricky with lag time, and it's really a rhythm game, which is hard with lag. So maybe we'll just save this to when we can be in, in person again, or if you're like really brave and have a lot of time to try to like iron that out for the class. Some of us are also meeting for like a couple socially distanced in person classes, oh, and so yeah. I'm gonna try and use this where, like, I think if we can all stomp together, that would make it so much easier. Yeah, in person. So I've I've only ever played this in person. I'm trying to like adapt it to a, a online setting. So in person, we would stand in a circle. In a circle, or actually kind of like a half, like a C shape. So the big booty is on the end, and then one, two, three, four, five, and going out this way. And I played it like this: ah, big booty, big booty, big booty, big booty. One number ha, da number this. Person, uh, big booty number. Yeah, so like the, every time you clap, is like you're saying either yourself or who you're sending it to. Um, so if you want to try it in person, it's really really fun, um, but just I think tricky on Zoom. Where did the name of this game come from? I remember playing this. I don't know with my cousins, like as a little kid, and I know Connor's played it like at camp. With the same name, right? It's that's the name. I it, I I do a slightly different. I've done a slightly different version of the song, and I love this thing you're saying about um, it sort of being like a, a like if you mess up, you go to the end of the line type of situation. I've played it with outs, where if you just mess up, you're out of the yeah. out of the game, and you have to redo the numbers. But I like that this sort of keeps everyone in, and it gives you like. Uh, something else to strive for to sort of work your way up the line to mm -hmm. become big booty it's like, <laughs> so it's yeah that's great I love it. when like when someone messes up especially when big booty messes up it's like ah, and then you have to jump back in and go like oh my numbers changed so there's a lot yeah. of you have to like keep reassessing the changing circumstances and stay with the group yeah that's an awesome view yeah yeah that's great um, so our, our last, oh, sorry, Mandy. Oh, no, no. I was just going to say, I could see that applying to um, when you're asking them to be aware of their something in particular, like make sure you keep your knees unlocked or make sure, you know, keep, keep yourself in a state of readiness or keep breathing or because, you know, you're putting them in a high pressure situation. Yeah. Right. right. Um, so our last game, uh, so Mandy, we, the way we split these games up were um, into sort of three groups. The first group of games was like games we can play sitting down in front of our camera, uh, those kind of games. And then the second group are games where maybe some people are sitting down and some people are standing up. And then the third group is everyone, the whole ensemble is, is up on their feet uh, playing around. So our last game in the group of games where we're all sitting down is uh, a game called knockout which um i actually got this i haven't played this with with one of my classes but i got this idea uh from watching uh reality tv so watching hell's kitchen which is just like my favorite reality tv show and uh and they were playing a uh, gordon ramsay plays a version of this game with his chef on that show and this is like a game that people play in like middle school history class too um, where uh, this is how it works. Uh, let's say you're in your middle school history class and you've got like those, you know, individual desks kind of situation going on. 
Uh, so the teacher as the facilitator has, uh, you know, some questions that they're going to ask, some review questions. Maybe there's an upcoming exam in the, in the class and they're going to ask some, uh, uh, some, some questions about history, right? Uh, two students will stand up and they're going to um, go head to head in this round of trivia, right? And so there's student A and student B. And let's say uh, uh, the teacher says the question and the first student to respond uh, correctly gets to move on to the next round. So let's say student A moves on, okay? Student B sits down. Student A and then student C are now head to head and uh, the teacher asks another question and the first person to get it correct moves on. Let's say uh, student C uh, gets it correct, student A sits down and it keeps going on and on. So the person who gets the question correct keeps moving on and whoever makes it to the very end of the, of, um, you know, of the knockout uh, uh, is the ultimate winner, right? So let's, uh, using us as an example here, um, uh, let's say I was facilitating, maybe uh, Jake and Aaron go head to head. Um, Jake gets the question right. Aaron uh, 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 doesn't move on. Jake moves on. And then Jake and Mandy go head to head, right? And if you're playing with a group of 16 or 20 students, then you, have, then you can go through everyone and everyone gets a turn to uh, answer a question, right? So we have a small group here, but let's give it, let's give it a try. Um, I'll think of uh, a, a couple of questions I ask. And you can, what's great about this game is you can make the questions about whatever, uh, you know, your class topic is or whatever your unit is. Um, and it's especially useful, uh, you know, if you're, if, you, if you're giving a quiz, an upcoming quiz or something like that, to sort of take the pressure off of uh, you know the the exam, the quiz, whatever, and and uh, make it kind of a fun way to, to study as a group. Um, but it's also just good uh, good review. Yeah. Question. So, like on a trivia game, there's a button or something. A lot of times that says I'm ready to answer. Can we do like a clap or something in place of that button? Great question. I totally forgot. Um, the reaction button. This is where we're bringing back the reaction button. Yeah. Oh, you right. could totally clap. Sometimes there's that lag, right, uh, that we were just experiencing in the last game. Oh. So I want to try it with the reaction button today. So, um, yeah, I guess we could, you know, you could choose whatever button you want. And then the facilitator is sort of trying to keep an eye out or the whole group um, maybe keeps an eye out to see uh, who reacts the quickest, right? So you want to keep your mouse or whatever over the, over the button. So you can choose a button to play with. So let's, um, we'll, we'll start with uh, Jake and Aaron. Okay, and I'm going to ask a question, a uh, pretty low stakes question here. Um, okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the question is, what is one plus one? Okay, I saw Aaron go first. Two. That's correct. Okay, so Jake doesn't move on now uh we'll wait for the reaction to go away great all right aaron and mandy you're up here we go um how does earl gister describe an action i forget no <laughs> Oh, Aaron. Okay, Aaron. I see you've uh, responded first. I might get it wrong in front of Mandy, which would be embarrassing. But but what? And then through it's being recorded as well. <laughs> um. Well. Well. Here's what I have. Uh, I want to make them feel blank. Cool. Yeah. Ding. 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 All right. Great. Okay. So that's pretty much it. And then Aaron, you would move on to the next round and so on and so forth. So let's say Aaron got that question wrong, then Mandy would have a turn to, um, to respond. And if Mandy gets it correct, then she would move on, right? What so it's kind of like that first, um, yeah. What happens if Mandy gets it wrong too? Great question. I, I don't Girl know. Girl comes back uh, from the grave. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe, uh, may, maybe the, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, somebody else in, I mean, I guess a couple things could happen. Um, to be honest, I haven't played this since middle school history class. So 
uh, maybe Jake could could be uh, get another opportunity to to answer, and then he could move on. Um, you could open it to everyone and just to get the answer from the group, and then maybe, maybe yeah, you could do that as well. Question. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, right? Yeah. Um, I can't remember if there was something else I was going to say about that, but um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's that's how it works. It's cool. Um, can I ask a question or just? I'm thinking and yeah. talking at the same time, but I like, as a student, I'm somebody who gets really nervous when I have these one-on-one -on -one games. So I wonder if there's a way, and I'm just spitballing, but if uh, you could play with teams and then have the answerer, I don't know if they could quickly do a group chat. Hmm. You know what I mean? Where they're like, oh, it's this, no, it's that. And then the person who's designated hits the button. That could be kind of um, kind of fun yeah absolutely yeah kind of, I mean you, you could totally adapt this game to like like family feud right where you've got teams and these are the top five answers on the board or whatever you know yeah you could totally play that way as well for sure cool you could potentially have um breakout rooms so if you have two separate breakout rooms you pose a question and then both yeah. groups can discuss the answer and you as a host join one or the other and get, and they just like copy the answer into the chat and you pick it up from the chat, you pick it up. So there. if group A is in breakout room one and then there's a group in breakout room two, if they, ch can they chat from there where everyone can see it? No, only, only the instructor. In the room. I think so. Just, just your breakout room can see it? And I think the instructor can see it or whoever's the host of the Zoom, I believe. I would suggest smaller rooms um, if you were going with that strategy. I think probably like four max humans um, because I think anything over that people can kind of sit back or like they have to go pee and this is an opportunity that the instructor's not here. Or, you know, you want to keep people engaged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a yeah. Really good game. Yeah, and it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, Jake, you're talking about um, doing some classes in person, socially distanced. This totally works for that as well. Um, yeah, yeah, great. Okay, so that brings us to uh, our next set of games, which are uh, some people have the opportunity to stay sitting down close to the camera, and this brings maybe one or two people up on their feet. Uh, at a time. So, okay, so yeah, so, yeah, um, go ahead, Aaron. We're yeah, you're describing start with, the first um, one, right? Uh, another improv game called "What Are You Doing?" And I would have uh, everyone stand for this game, just so that you are ready to go into action if you so choose. Um, and I would say an accommodation if someone doesn't have their camera on for whatever reason that day. Um, to remind everyone to keep like non-video participants in their view and you can still call on those people and they can vocally just like say what they're doing and do and use a sound rather than emotion which i haven't described what the game is yet so that might make more sense in like a minute or two um, but i'd have everyone with their video on stand up in their in their zone um and then the person who starts the game picks a very physical action that they are doing and they're just doing the physical action. And then anyone in the group can ask, what are you doing? So Connor, can, um, can I volunteer you to be the first person to ask? Sure. What are you doing? I am swimming in the ocean. And this person says something that is not what they're physically doing something different. So it's a bit of this kind of exercise. And then Connor is going to physicalize swimming in the ocean. And then anyone in the group can ask. What are you doing? I'm brushing my teeth. What are you doing? I'm walking on the moon. Andy, what are you doing? I'm shucking corn. 
<laughs> Aaron, what are you doing? I'm moonwalking. <laughs> Good, I need company. <laughs> so, so an important aspect of this game is speaking before you've thought about it too much. This is like letting your impulses fly out physically and verbally. So physically jumping into whatever was just given to you. How, whatever your first thought is. Yeah, Mandy? Do I keep walking in space um, until Great. my next turn? You can release that as soon as the next person takes on a new thing. Yeah, and I would, I would uh, encourage, encourage people to um, like let everyone go. I would say like, I want everyone to have a turn um, so that if people are like a little hesitant, they're aware that, that other people are not gonna go in front of them before they go so that they'll jump in. So I think it, it might be good to <clears throat> try this where there's like two of us with non-video participants to see how that works if people don't have their video on. Here, I'll do that. Cool. So I would say um, use your voice to, to um, instead of your body for what, for what you're doing. Okay, so since I'm on video, I'm gonna be standing up. Um, Connor, do you want to start this one? Sure. What are you doing? I am walking the dog. Oh, 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 easy, easy, easy. Not again. Jake, what are you doing? I'm riding a motorbike. Aaron, what are you doing? I'm petting my cat. <laughs> Jeez. Mandy, what are you doing? I'm in a parade. Great, great, cool, cool. We can open back. So I think that totally works and it's like a very fun, um, you know, it, yeah, it, you're right. totally including everybody and you still have to use your imagination and jump into a committed choice with your voice. That would actually be really good in a voice class because I was like, you know. <laughs> what does pet my cat sound like? Or dog, I don't know why they were both animals. I don't know. Okay. It's a little bit like that uh, free association stuff too. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great, that's fun. But you kind of, what Mandy was talking about, you do have more imagination and creativity to like build a world when the video is switched off, where you mm -hmm. can be the cat, you can do everything. Yeah. In a vocal class, this is a very cool game. Yeah, I would, I would also say that um, you want to let the person establish what they're doing, like let them kind of, if Connor's doing this, let him do this for you know a few beats before you ask what he's doing, because um, it can start to move too fast. And then, yeah, you want to let the person like find whatever they're doing. Sure. Awesome. Great. Cool. Okay. okay. So our next... what's that name? Oh, called? sorry, Jake. Go ahead. What's that game called? What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. Sorry, Connor. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so our next game, uh, you, we may already know the rules too, so we'll just do a quick overview. Uh, it's the always popular charades, uh, one of my favorite games. And, uh, and uh, I, get very in, I get very attached to, to charades. I get very into it. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, so I, I think this can definitely work on Zoom and I think, you, I, you would still play it in teams. You could, um, you could be all one team. That's fine. I, I, I think, especially if, if you know, if you were working with um, maybe a, a younger a group of younger, you know, really young students, like in middle school or high school. Uh, but I think in in a college class, I think it's totally fine to split it up into teams. I, I would say, uh, well, here's how I, here's how I personally play uh, charades. 
when I'm when I'm leading it or giving the instructions. Uh, we create teams, and then each team goes off separately to come up with the clues. Uh, the clues are usually um, uh, book titles, movie titles, song titles, names of uh, famous people. Um, uh, well, let's just let's just start with that, or TV names of TV shows, etc. Right. And each team is coming up with maybe five clues, five to six clues. And then those teams come back. Those clues are uh, then given to me. And let's see, uh, team A, let's say team A and team B comes up with clues. Uh, teams, team A's clues are going to team B one at a time and team B's clues are going to team A one at a time. So in, on Zoom, I think I would send my, we would come up with teams and then I would send those teams off into breakout rooms for five minutes. They would come up with the clues and then they would uh, message me on Zoom or via email the list of the clues so that I would have both teams clues. And then I would have my uh, private messages open on Zoom. Some instructors turn off private messaging, um, but I would have them open so I could message each uh, student privately, and then I would send uh, whoever's about to go up with the clue to, to physicalize the clue. I would send them the clue uh, privately via the Zoom uh, chat. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's how I would. I mean, that's how I would play on on Zoom. I I think we all kind of know the the rules of charades, right? You're not allowed to uh, speak. You're physicalizing the uh, the the clue. Um, uh, just uh, so here, here I, I, I'll just review really quickly, at least how I know the, um, the hints or how I've learned them. Uh, but if you have other ways of doing the hints, that's great too. And, and you can feel free to, to um, share those. Um, so the big ones, you know, reading a book, opening your hands with a book, um, a TV show, uh, creating like a rectangular TV screen. Uh, movie is the old-fashioned camera here. Uh, play, uh, pulling the ropes of the uh, curtain. Um, here's one to think about as we move on, um, you know, uh, because I, I learned this, you know, uh, uh, when I was first taught this game, I, I learned it a long time ago. So if you're doing like a celebrity, right, how do you indicate... Um, you know, how do you, especially in 2021, right? How do you indicate uh, gender, right? Or let's say, I, I, I think if you're working with like, you know, maybe famous characters uh, and you know it's a, a, a man or a woman, for example, um, there are ways to indicate on, uh, in charades, um, uh, some of those ways uh, might be outdated. So there might be ways to um, uh, update that, right? Or if you're, if you're indicating, uh, a non-binary celebrity, right? How do you how do you do that? I, I don't have a way right now, uh, but I think that's that's something to think about as you um, as you work on this game. In the in sort of the the old-fashioned way that I learned um, when, when I was taught this game, uh, if you were indicating a, a a male celebrity or a male fictional character, right, you would make an upside-down triangle, and if you were indicating a female character you would indicate using a right side up triangle. Okay. Um, let me think. Oh, if you're singing, you can either hold the microphone or uh, sing a song out. Um, hmm, am I forgetting any major? Uh, oh, so, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, those are, so those are the categories. Um, and then if you're getting into, uh, how do you indicate words, right? So the number of words in the clue holding up uh, on your hand, you know, if it's five words clue, five words, four words, three words, et cetera. And then um, on your arm, indicating the amount of uh, syllables. So let's say it's a five word clue, sort of bringing your hand down to then bring it back up to say, maybe the first word is two syllables, right? Or three syllables on your arm. Um, if, it's a sh if it's a small word like in, a, to the B. So I usually indicate like this, like it's a small word. Um, if I want to indicate the entire clue, 
for the whole uh, concept of the of the clue, I might do like a, a large global gesture, like it's, I'm going to perform the whole thing. If the word rhymes with another word or sounds like another word, I might tug on my ear for sounds like. Um, anything else? Or uh, and then finally, if they if they get it correct, um, knows you know, you know what it is. Um, I think that's it. I think those are all the clues. And then you would, I think you would play just like any other round of charades, right? Where um, the people on Zoom have their microphones on, maybe as an additional um, uh, barrier from possible cheating. You know, if, if people, if the performer is uh, getting really excited and wants to vocalize, they just turn their microphone off so they can't, uh, they can't, you know, speak. Um, but I think that's it. I think those are at least the ones I can think of at the top of my head. Yeah, Erin. Uh, you can't point to anything and you can't, like if it's a cup, you can't pick up anything, right? That's important. Right, right, right. Yeah, you can't indicate uh, that, correct. You have to uh, mime everything. And I'm also, um, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about this man and woman. It seems like you could easily do anything that's not distinctly male or female, maybe just being like a circle. It seems like if you're going to point out those two, you definitely want to offer something that is non-gender conforming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm sure there might be resources online that have already thought of some some ways to do that. But yeah, yeah. you can come up with, with anything. Or maybe you, maybe you come up with it as a group as well. Um, awesome. Any, any other, any questions or additions to uh, charades? I just want to note that I think always the instructor can message students individually. So even if you have that turned off where they can't communicate with each other one on one, instructor can always send like what the what the next clue is or what the next item is. <clears throat> Great. Okay. Um, yeah, and maybe it helps to turn off um, that that function. Uh, Do you know where that for is? everyone to message? Do you know where that is in Zoom where we can turn it off? Yeah, it's um, it's on your Carmen Zoom if you uh, like edit the in oh, okay. invite. So if it's like a repeated invite, it's the same place where you can um, put like on waiting room or off waiting room. Okay, you can cool. say participants can't communicate one on one. There's also, uh, Mandy, I'm gonna just make you co-host of this. So maybe you can see this as well. If, do you see the security button right at the bottom, right next to participants? Um, next to what? Right next to participants on Zoom. Nope, I don't see that. No, okay, I don't know. Oh, I do see it, yeah, here it is. There's like a shield, just click yeah. on that and see that it says allow participants to share a screen, to chat, to rename themselves, unmute themselves, start video. So okay. that chat option is already ticked. So just untick that and they won't be able to chat with each other, just everybody or you. I've spent approximately 4 million hours on Zoom and I have never seen that button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I only recently learned that. Uh, um, I have a, a small thought also about this charades is that you need to time this, right? So it might be useful to have like someone on the on each team time and they can just use their phone say it's like 45 seconds and i would just have them that's 45 minutes good god <laughs> not that long complicated so you can do it in seconds though right so say we're doing 20 seconds they could just hold it up so that everyone can like see oh cool and then yeah. just like time maybe yeah that's great um one one other thing i'll say about this as like a is a really advanced version of this. And I'll give credit where credit is due. I played um, uh, charades in, uh, this was in undergrad, Stephen McKinley Henderson's acting class. And the way he plays it is you play it just like I've described it first. And then you, uh, uh, you will, you, you sort of as the facilitator, you go over to one of the teams, the team that's sort of sitting down, right? And, and is not playing. Um, and the other team uh, uh, goes up sort of onto, onto the stage and, and plays just, just a regular old round of charades, just like they would. But you instruct the team that's sitting down to observe 
one person, each, each person in team B is observing one person in team A, right? Their behavior, what they say, everything, right? So then what happens is the, the round of charades is played. And if you have an, an even number, hopefully, you know, one, it's a one-to-one -one ratio, right? One person is, is observing one person. When they switch, team B goes up and performs what they, what they saw exactly, right? So they just perform the scene as a scene, right? They perform that round of charades exactly as they saw it, right? So it's another, um, so it's just a cool acting exercise, um, you know? And if they get the, the um, if they don't get the lines, the text perfect, that's okay. But they're getting sort of the, the, um, the big ideas of what they saw, right? Um, and uh, yeah, that's a lot, that's a fun, um, that's a really fun, sort of, um, uh, you know, variation on, on, on charades after you've sort of, the group has sort of mastered uh, the game or has gotten comfortable with how to play. Um, yeah. It becomes like a meta exercise, kind of. It is, but it's super, it's super fun, yeah. Very I love it. Animals in the zoo, watching animals in the zoo. <laughs> um, I do want to mention, uh, it's fine for us to go over, but just so we know, we have about 15 minutes left of what we expected of this, and we have two more games, right? Uh, we actually have four more four. games. Four more games. But uh, we can try to move quickly, and you know, if we don't get to the last one, everyone will be okay, probably. <laughs> so um, our next game, uh, I call this dance pass. This is something I use at the beginning of a class. Um, it can also be like a stretch pass. So we're moving into the section where everybody is up on their feet. Um, so everyone that's got their camera on, go ahead and stand. And even if you don't have your camera on today, go ahead and stand up in your space and just make sure that um, everyone makes sure that your mic is uh, not on mute. So um, I am going to start with a dance move and everyone is going to follow the dance move that I am doing. And then I'm going to call out somebody else and then they are going to do their own dance move and we will all follow that one. And so we're going to move through so that everyone is past the baton of leadership for this. Um, cool, okay. Jake. Mandy. Connor. Great. Aaron. Great, great. So we've gone through everyone. Cool. So that would be all that we would play of that game. We would, I would usually just move through everyone one time. You can also do a version where it's a stretch and um, each person picks a stretch that they want to do. So I'll start. Mandy. Honor. Touch your toes. Nod your head. Yes. Shake your head. No. Jake. Oh, is that what you were adding? <laughs> Just instincts. Just say that. Oh, jaw. Cool. Great. Okay. So if you, again, didn't have your video on, you could just say, I'm touching my toes. Um, and then still pass it that way. I'm thinking this could be cool for dialects class where we have people do different, you know, yeah. stretches and stuff. Yeah. Cool. So I, I use that one a lot and it just got everyone like moving and feeling like loose and silly in some way, especially the dance one. 
um, and gave the leadership of like how we warm up as well when we did the stretching one. And just warm ups in general, we could go through a vocal warm up with just this of like passing it to other people and someone being like, I'm going to do grapes now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something cool too about being seen or it's as far as ensemble. I know that sounds kind of woo woo being seen, but you know, I'm scared and then I do something and everybody mirrors me. Yeah. And then I support them when they're scared and they have to do something. Yeah. We build ensemble. Yeah. Cool. Um, next game that we're going to do, I call it the letter blank. It's not a great title. Um, I learned this from Jess Hughes and um, everyone stands up. And I, as the instructor, am going to call out a letter. And I will say the letter blank. Three, two, one, blast off. And by the time that I say blast off, you need to embody something that starts with that letter. So this is a game of involving your body um, and going with your first instinct, your first impulse. You don't have time to choose because it's so quick. So whatever comes up in your brain first, you gotta fully grab onto that and commit to that and involve your whole body as much as you can with that. And then you freeze when I say blast off in that shape. So let's give this a try. The letter A, three, two, one, blast off. I'm so sorry, did you say K? Yes, K, maybe, yes. Uh, well, here's, so, Wait, you can all you can all release your your K shape. So um, I played this before where I've said like K as in kite, but then everyone's got kite in their mind, and then everyone's becoming a kite. So you don't want to say like letter as in that. So I'm just really trying to enunciate, but I was obviously not super enunciated. So maybe I should be closer. Can we say K as in Kevin? Yeah, but then um. it could also be Kevin. Could, is it possible you could also um, type the letter in the chat and then it gives those people like three, two, one blast off to go? Sure. Yeah, let's try that. So I'll put it into the chat as well. So if everyone wants to open their chat feature. Um, and then also this is a freezing game. There's different variations of this, but we'd start where you freeze in that thing. All right. Here we go. The letter T. Three, two, one, blast off. Mandy, what are you? I'm the top. Yes. <laughs> Jake, what are you? On a tricycle. Connor, what are you? A tightrope walker. Nice, okay, go ahead and release that. The letter H, three, two, one, blast off. Connor, what are you? A hot dog. Jake, what are you? On a horse. Mandy, what are you? Hot. <laughs> Great, release that. Okay, then um, after doing that a few times, we'd go into a new round where I would ask you to give me the sound of the thing when I call on you. Mm. So, the letter F, three, two, one, blast off. And you freeze in it, you freeze in it. Uh, Jake, what, what does this thing sound like? <laughs> Great. Listen. Connor, what does this sound like? <laughs> Mandy, what does yours sound like? Bench. Great, great. So you could ask them what they are and the sound, or I like it when you just ask the sound to see what comes out of that. Um, sometimes students really want to tell you what they are, so they're excited about it, but um, then they really have to commit to like how they're vocalizing it as well. So that's round two, two of this. Um, 
round three is involving a movement with it. So the letter, so every time you're always gonna start frozen. And then when I call on you, you'll do the sound or the movement. The letter B, three, two, one, blast off. Jake, how does this thing move? Don't think about it, go. Great, what are you? I'm a bunker. Yes. Can you commit more to how a bunker moves? Great, great. Connor, what are you? A ball. And how does this ball move? Nice. Uh, Mandy, how does this thing move? <laughs> and what are you? A bee. Nice. Okay, release, release your, your bee. Um, cool. So then you can involve like a couple of aspects of this. You can involve a sound and a movement. Um, so I know we're like running short on time, but you see how you can like add more and more layers of this. Um, when we're in person, I've done it where you interact with someone next to you, um, like with a sound and a movement without saying what you are. Um, and that can be like really fun and silly. Uh, that was really great. Also would, um, I would spend a bit more time in the first round um, of getting everyone to really involve their whole body all the way to, from their fingers to their toes, to their spine, to their face. Like how can you really commit to the choice that you're making? Any questions? No, I was just jotting down. Cool. I love that game. I've played that with like all of my classes where we need games. I yeah, the imagination work. There's a lot of mm -hmm. great stuff there. And going on your impulse, not like saying that's a bad idea. You don't have time to do that. Yeah. yeah. And Aaron, do you go to every single student or do you just? No. no, usually not. The first round or two, I usually will. So people don't feel left out. But then I will just do like four to five each round and then I have everyone release. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, so that's it. You can do like the version one in a class and you can pick it up again and add like the version two of the sound and pick it up again next class and add like the movement. Um, so you can build off of that game. I wonder if you could make a new game from this where you give everyone the same movement and they have like an open scene, but physically, hmm. you know, like raising one foot and like, what could that become? Or mm -hmm. foot's not a good choice because we can't really see most people's feet in this Zoom world, but hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's great. great. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, okay, so two more and then we'll be all done with this workshop but uh the the next game is like a follow the leader kind of game this is like a classic game um uh especially played with younger younger groups of students um where uh one person one ensemble member leaves the room and the team comes up with you know who's going to be the leader to to start the physical action and then change the you know physical action and the person comes back stands in the middle of the circle and tries to guess who is the leader, right? Um, there's, some, uh, there's some concern that this game doesn't work as well on Zoom because maybe it's really sometimes too easy depending on the size of the group to see who is the leading because you're kind of, you know, instead of turning around to look at the ensemble members, you're, you kind of can see everyone in the same, in the same space, but how this would kind of, you could kind of play this on Zoom would be send uh, one of the ensemble members to the waiting room. Um, and then everyone in the, in the groups plays the same way. They choose someone to lead. I would say um, to try to combat the, the you know, um, the thing where, uh, you know, making it too easy to kind of see who's, who's leading uh, by standing, you know, farther away from the camera. Um, 
so everyone kind of looks the same in terms of uh, distance from the from the camera um uh yeah and then and then bringing the person back and when you bring the person back everyone is already sort of in the in the motion so i would say maybe the facilitator isn't playing if they have to kind of be um you know uh, operating the the computer um but uh yeah that's kind of how i would i would play that game it might be too easy to kind of demonstrate here with only uh, four people but um yeah any questions or or additions to to follow the leader on zoom it's a great idea to send them to the waiting room yeah uh, the other thing that occurs to me is that it might not be all bad to have to do an easy game where everyone can succeed in the beginning. That's true. Absolutely. If you have a really skittish group or something. Absolutely. Uh, great. So that's that. Erin? Uh, Our last and final game is very silly. Very silly. And it is a game where... I am going to say a, a sort of song or a rhyme. I don't actually don't think it rhymes, but a, a like a nursery rhyme maybe. Um, and it's going to repeat several times. So when you feel like you kind of know where it's going or starting to learn it, um, I ask that you say it with me. And you will also be doing uh, the things that this game, is, this rhyme is asking physically of you. It's not too challenging, I don't think. Um, I think it's probably gonna be good if we start standing because we're gonna involve more of our body as we get into it. And again, I'm just gonna preface, this is a silly one. Okay. Hi, my name is Bob and I work in the button factory. I got a wife and a dog and a family. One day, my boss comes up to me and says, hey, Bob, are you busy? I said, no, push the button with your right hand. And we all do this. Hi, my name is Bob, and I work in the button factory. I got a wife and a dog and a family. One day, my boss comes up to me and says, hey, Bob, are you busy? I said, no. Push the button with your left hand. Hi, my name is Bob. And as you know this, uh, sing with me. And I work in the button factory. Button factory. I and the dog and family. One day, One my day. boss comes up to me and says, says hey, me. Bob, are you busy? I said, no. Push the button with the your button right foot. Hi, my name is Bob. Is Bob. And work in the button factory. Got a wife and a dog and a family. One day, my boss comes up to me and says, Hey, Bob, are you busy? I said, No. Push the button with your left hand. Hi, my name is Bob. And work in the button factory. I got a wife and a dog and a family. One day, my boss comes up to me and says, hey, Bob, are you busy? I said, no, push the button with your head. Hi, my name is Bob, and the work in the button factory. I got a wife and a dog and family. One day, my boss comes up to me and says, hey, Bob, are you busy? I said, no, push the button with your tongue. Hey! Silly. <laughs> Super silly. Yeah. But um but fun. Yeah. <laughs> Like a, like a it sounds a little off when other people start singing. Not that it matters, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Sounded like a Jane Fonda workout video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe everyone have their 
mic off. That seems less fun, but it might be like hard with everyone going at the same time. I wonder if different people could do like you could, I could say, hmm. uh, you know, once we do it once, then I'd say, yeah. uh, hey, Bob, and then I'd say, Aaron, and you'd say, hi. My name's Bob, and then take the lead with the vocal. Yeah. That's another idea. Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's what we got. That was incredible. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for leading this workshop. This was really, really great. And while, I'll say one thing. While you said, uh, Jake, that um, that this workshop was my idea, it was not. It was these guys' idea. I just went to their meeting and took notes, and then I was looking at the notes and said, oh, yeah. So so thank you for coming up with the Zoom idea. Yeah, this was great. And this is hugely beneficial for me, and I'm sure many other graduate teachers and potential professors at OSU. Cool. It's fun. It's fun to play some games this morning with you all. <laughs> I'm going to stop this recording. All right. So thank you for watching, everyone. Bye.